Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the Chemical Equilibrium series. Uh, in this video, which is gonna be the last video, we're gonna be talking about Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, I'm gonna start off this video with some food for thought. Um, what would you do if you were in a room and it was too cold, right? Well, clearly what I would do is I would turn up the heat, all right? Um, and what would you do if there were olives on your pizza and you, and you don't like olives? Well, I would personally just take off the olives, right? So these seem like very, um, very logical questions that I'm asking. Um, and why am I asking these? Well, because these are going to be related to Le Chatelier's principle, right? So Le Chatelier's principle states that if a stressor is applied to a system in equilibrium, the system will shift towards the direction that will reestablish equilibrium. Okay, so let's let's again cross-reference this uh, this um, definition with our food for thought questions. So if a stressor is applied. Right, so the stressor, the stressor is applied. In this case, the stressor was the um, the coldness, right? To a system, the system is the room. Um, in equilibrium, the system will shift towards the direction that will reestablish equilibrium. So I'm going to increase the heat in order to reestablish equilibrium, right? Uh, same with number two. The stressor is going to be the olives, right? Um, on the pizza. And if, you, and if you wanna reestablish equilibrium, you're gonna take off the olives. So here's a three-step approach that you're going to use to solve these Le Chatelier's principle problems, okay? Part one is to identify the stressor, much like we did with the food for thought questions. Um, and these stressors can be concentration, temperature, pressure, or volume. Part two is to do the opposite of part one, is to and part three is to ask yourself the question, do I have to shift left or right to achieve number two? Okay, so that's a three-step approach here. Uh, we'll get back to these um, more in-depth explanations of the stressors later on, but I just wanna start off with uh, some practice. So let's look at number two here. What would happen to the position of the equilibrium when the following changes are made to the equilibrium system below? So here's your system, it's this reaction here, and changes just means um, if a stressor is applied, right? Same thing. Um, so part A says that sulfur dioxide is added to the system. So this is a concentration change because I'm adding more sulfur dioxide, right? So I'm gonna underline this right here because that's my sulfur dioxide. And so let's do the three-step approach um, for this problem here. Step one is to identify your stressor. So my stressor is SO2, right? And it is being increased right? Because sulfur dioxide is being added to the system. That's my stressor. So I'm going to put an up arrow for increase. Um, two is going to be do the opposite of number one. So that means I'm going to want to decrease. Step three is to ask yourself, do I have to shift left or right in order to do number two, in order to decrease the concentration of SO2? Well, SO2 is on the right-hand side. So in order to decrease it, I'm going to have to shift left, or I have to go away from it. If you're going towards something, you're making more of it. If you're going away from it, you're making less of it. So I'm gonna go left, so that means I'm gonna to have to shift left in order to reestablish equilibrium. All right, let's do part B. Let's say sulfur trioxide is removed from the system. So now we're identifying this right here. Um, so again, three-step approach. Step one is to um, identify your stressor. So sulfur trioxide is removed, which means that there's a decrease in sulfur trioxide. Um, Step two is to do the opposite. So we're gonna to wanna to increase sulfur trioxide. Step three is to ask yourself, do I have to shift left or right to increase the concentration of sulfur trioxide? Well, sulfur trioxide is on the left-hand side, right? So in order to increase it, I have to make more of it. So I have to go left. So that's gonna be a shift to the left, okay? So that's how you would tackle um, a concentration change type of problem. Note that the coefficients in front of each molecule has no effect on the concentration change in this example. Um, all you're gonna do is identify what's being added or removed. So the next type of stressor problem that you might encounter um, is a temperature change, okay? So the key thing for temperature change is you need to identify which side of the equation is heat on, okay? Um, if it's on the left-hand side, that means heat is absorbed and that means delta H is equal to, uh, is a positive number. Delta H is just your change in enthalpy, which is the um, amount of heat that's either absorbed or released, right? If it's absorbed, that means it's positive. Um, 
On the other hand, if heat is on the right hand side, that means heat is released and your delta H is gonna be negative. So we're gonna move down here and do number six. Um, six says predict the effect of decreasing the temperature on the position of the following equilibria. So I'm gonna underline, um, I'm gonna underline this, decreasing the temperature. Because for our three-step approach, right, number one is to always identify the stressor. So the stressor here for all parts A, B, and C is a decrease in temperature. Okay. Um, so let's look at part A. Number two of the three-step approach is to do the opposite of number one, which is to increase temperature. Number three is you're gonna have to ask yourself, well, do I have to shift left or right to increase the temperature? Notice how heat, notice how heat is on the right hand side, right? It's it's signified with this 49.7 kilojoules, right? Kilojoules is just a unit for heat. So if heat is on the right hand side, right, I'm just right, heat is on the right hand side. Um, if you want to increase heat, you got to move towards the heat, right? Just like in a real life situation, if you want to get warm, you're going to have to move closer to the fire. So we're going to have to shift right to increase the temperature. So this would be a shift to the right. Um, if you look at part B, notice how part B uh, doesn't give you the heat in the equation. It actually gives it to you in the form of delta H. We already talked about delta H's, which is the change in enthalpy. A positive delta H, which is the case for this, uh, means that it's the heat is going to be on the left-hand side. So highly recommend that when you're doing a change in temperature problem, you write down which side heat is on. So heat is on the left-hand side. So we're on this side of the equation. Now let's do our three-step approach. Remember part one we said is the stressor is a decrease in temperature. Part two is going to be, we're going to have to increase the temperature then to counteract that. Part three is, do I have to shift left or right to increase the temperature, right? Well, heat is on the left-hand side, so I'm going to have to shift to the left to get to the heat, right? Um, part C is very much like part B. They give you a negative delta H, though. So negative means that the heat is on the right-hand side. So I'll write it down on the right-hand side of the equation. Um, so steps one and two are the same, right? So our goal is to figure out how we're going to increase the temperature for part C. Do I have to shift left or right? Well, I'm going to shift towards heat to get um, a higher temperature. So it's going to be to the right because heat is on the right-hand side. The next type of stressor problem that you will encounter is probably going to be a pressure problem. Um, for pressure, you're going to you're going to solely look at the coefficients of your um, reaction. So you're going to compare the total moles on the left and right hand side for pressure and volume. So I'll, I'll write this out here for both pressure and volume, um, solids and liquids. Solids and liquids do not apply for counting when you're counting the moles on both the left and right hand side. All right. So I'll say um, do not include solids and liquids. Okay. Um, so Le Chatelier's principle does not deal with solids and liquids. So let's look at question number three, part B. Um, you're given this chemical reaction as your system. And part B says the pressure on the system increases. So we want to know, is this reaction going to have to shift left or right to reestablish equilibrium? So we're going to do our three-step approach here. So step one is to always identify the change, right? So we have an increase in pressure. Step two is to do the opposite. So we want to decrease the pressure to reestablish equilibrium. And step three is what we're trying to figure out. Is it, going to is it going to shift left or right to decrease the pressure? So remember, for any pressure change problem, you want to count up the number of moles you have on the left-hand side and number of moles you have on the right-hand side, right? And we do not include solids or liquids. So I'm gonna highlight in red here the states. All right, we have a solid, a liquid, and a gas. So because we do not, um, because the Chatelier's principle does not apply to solids or liquids, I'm gonna cross out H2O and the HG, all right? So on the left-hand side, how many total moles do I have? Well, I have zero moles on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I have only one mole of gas, right? So the right-hand side has more moles. And this is going to come in handy when we're dealing with pressure because um, I'm actually going to illustrate this with a, with, a, um, with a drawing. So 
let's say, oops, let's say um, this house on the left represents the number of moles on the left-hand side of the equation. And the house on the right represents the number of moles um, on the right-hand side of the equation. So the left-hand side, I have zero moles. So there's no one in the house. The right side, I only have one person in the house. So there's one mole total. Um, so let me ask you this, which house would have more pressure? Well, it'd be the house on the right because there's less space inside, right? There's, so it's gonna feel, you're gonna feel more pressure if you were to go inside this house. Whereas uh, basically it's more cramped inside this house. Um, whereas this house um, has less pressure because there's more free space. So if that's the case, are we gonna have to shift left or right to get a decrease in pressure? We're gonna wanna shift left then, right? Because if we're trying to decrease the pressure, we wanna go towards the house that's less cramped, that has less pressure, which is the house that has um, less moles, right? And moles would be analogous again to the number of people. Um, you do not include solids and liquids for any of these Le Chatelier uh, problems. So even including concentration. So let me just circle this and say that this also holds true for concentration. Um, and I think we can illustrate this by looking at um, 3A right here. So let's say HGO is added to the system. Well, HGO is a solid, right? So if you're thinking, okay, well, there's a concentration change if you're increasing HGO. Well, you don't have to think about that because if it's a solid, you don't have to worry about that um, and say that there is no um, shift in equilibrium because you don't deal with solids or liquids. All right, guys, we're gonna look at the fourth type of stressor, which is a volume change. So it says, number four says, when the volume of the following mixture of gases is increased, what will be the effect on the equilibrium position? So same kind of problem. Uh, so let's do um, our three-step approach, which is identify the stressor. So we have um, an increase in volume. Uh, step two is to do the opposite. So we want to decrease volume. And step three is, is it going to have to, is the reaction going to have to shift left or right to decrease the volume here? Well, when we're dealing with volume change, we can um, also count out the number of moles on the left-hand side. So that's four plus one. So there's five moles of gas on the left-hand side. Right-hand side, we have two plus two. So it's four moles of gas. There's no liquids or solids. So we don't have to worry about excluding anything right now. So we're going to want to shift towards a side that has less volume. You can think about volume as the amount of free space. Um, so you're going to want to shift towards a side that has more moles of gas, right? If there's more people in the house, that means there's less free space. So we're going to want to shift left in order to decrease the volume. Um, and so you can think about volume and pressure as being inversely related. So if you increase the pressure, that means you're decreasing the volume. If you are decreasing the pressure, that means you're increasing the volume here. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is if a catalyst is added to a reaction. Um, this is almost like a trick question uh, because let's say your teacher gives you this problem on a test. There's actually gonna be no effect or no shift in equilibrium if a catalyst is added because the catalyst, what it does is it speeds up the reaction rate, but it has no effect on the equilibrium of um, a reaction. All right, guys, that's gonna conclude uh, the Le Chatelier's principle part of the series um, and that's going to actually include the entire series as a whole for chemical equilibrium so um, thank you for watching um, if you haven't seen the other uh, first three videos please go and check them out um, they're on chemical equilibrium uh, the k constant and the reaction quotient um, and i will see you guys in the next video